Good morning. We're in sunny Hackney and we're going to do bench grafting, okay? So we're going to graft some apple trees using the whip and tongue method. And essentially, this is how we propagate fruit trees. Uh, because if you plant a pip of an apple, then you will never get the same apple again, okay? So if I plant a pip of a Cox's Orange Pippin, even by the time I've waited many, many years to even get fruit, so first of all, you have to go through the full stage of juvenility for that tree, uh, and, and during that time, a tree can be quite vulnerable, but eventually I get the fruit, pick it off, and more often than not, it's not going to be very tasty, and that's because every pip will give you a different tree due to the flowers being uh, pollinated by bees who have been on any number of different apple blossoms. So the only way to ensure you get the exact variety you want is to take a piece of wood from a tree that gives you those apples and graft it onto a root system of another tree. Okay, so this is Malus and this is Malus. They're both apple. Uh, this is a variety called Raker and I've been selecting these scions while I've been out and about pruning earlier this year. So I've been looking for shoots of last year's growth, ideally so something around pencil diameter uh, more or less. And what I'm going to do now is select a scion, this is this piece, and I'm going to match it up roughly diameter wise to my rootstock. So from here, I'm going to select about five or six inches and I'm going to cut below a bud, okay? I'm going to make a nice diagonal cut below a bud on my rootstock. And on my scion, what I'm looking for is I'm going to cut above a bud. So below a bud on my rootstock, above a bud on my scion, and then I'm going to select one, two, three, four, about four or five buds and cut back there. Now this gives you a, a scion that's more or less the length of the secateurs and that gives you enough grip to make your cut and a little bit of leeway if you don't make the cut perfectly in the first go. Now it's really not rocket science. Uh, all we're aiming to do is match up the cambium layer uh, of the two pieces. So if we look at the rootstock and if you're able to see this more closely now just underneath the bark you'll see a little thin layer, a thin green layer here and that's the cambium layer and what we're aiming to do is match up the cambium layer which is full of regenerative tissues and all the growth cells on the scion and the, sorry, the scion and the rootstock and we get those matched up and then we should be onto a winner. So first of all I'm going to take my scion here and these have been kept in a plastic bag in a fridge or in a cold shed and they can last a few months over the dormant period in the winter like that but sometimes they will dry out so you need to check and make sure that they're still healthy and there's still signs of uh, the buds starting to swell slightly and what we're aiming to do now is make a cut across here quite a long cut ideally we want something that's quite long and not cutting through a bud and pointing the knife towards me and at the same time, I'm gonna pull the scion that way and pull the knife this way. And you really need a sharp knife for this. Uh, a blunt knife will let you down. So, and actually mine is getting a tiny little bit blunt, but that's not bad. What we've got there is quite a straight, straight cut there. You want a straight surface. So I've got two similar length cuts there. Now it's important not to touch this cut surface, okay? Because the oils from our skin uh, may well interfere with the uh, callus formation. Now this bit is a little more tricky, okay? So what we're going to do is make something called the tongue now, okay? So what I'm gonna do is put my thumb against here and a third of the way from the bottom on my rootstock, I'm gonna place the blade and gently I'm gonna use the length of the blade and draw that back towards me using the pressure on my thumb. And I'm gonna give that a little wiggle outwards, okay, so it sticks out slightly. Then I'm going to find my scion and figure out where the corresponding cut's going to be. So a third of the way from the bottom here, more or less, here, more or less, a third of the way from the top. A little tricky here because this is finer wood. Making sure you don't go too far and cutting right through. Now, if all's gone well, these two should splice together 
like so. And they should hold together like this. And you can see a little Z shape there. Uh, and that's going to help them to interlock. That's maximizing the, the contact between the cambium layer. It's also going to make for a very strong graft. So this method of grafting uh, is a little tricky to master. It's one of the trickier grafts, but actually it's got a much higher success rate uh, for the scion to take because it's maximizing this, this contact and it's actually uh, a nice strong graft once it's, once it's formed. So now I'm going to get some grafting tape. I'm taking my bottom bit there and I'm just trapping it round like so. And I forgot to mention as well that here, if you see a little bit poking out of the top on the scion, you should be able to see a little bit of a cut on the scion there. And that's known as the church window. And that's good if you can see that. That's going to help aid uh, the callousing there. So I'm working my way up. And this is to bind the two together. This is going to really help to pull them together. So I'm doing this quite nice and tight. And it's also going to prevent this uh, cut wood from desiccating, from drying out. It's going to create a nice seal while the two bits of tissue begin to fuse together. And at the very top, I want to make sure that it's a definite seal at the top, so I'm pulling that extra tight and then I'm going to work my way back down. Like so. And then give it a tug at the bottom to tighten it up. And then just finish that off with a simple half hitch. And then it can just neaten that up like this. And over the next few weeks, this callus is going to start forming. If all's gone well, we've matched up the cambium. Uh, at this point, it's worth mentioning that it's okay if you use scion diameter that is smaller than the diameter of a rootstock, but not the other way around. You couldn't put a fatter scion onto a thinner rootstock. If you do have a scion that's much thinner, that's okay. Just make sure that one side of it, at least, is linked up. So you'd push it over to one side, so at least on, say, this side, then the cambium just under the bark is nice and flush and in contact, okay? And that will still be okay. So this will now be potted. So what you need to get yourself a pot and some compost. So I'm going to label this clearly. Ideally you'd have a label to put on a tree as well. I don't have one to hand at the moment. This is an apple called Raker. That's a variety and I'm also going to put on the rootstock size. In this case M M 106 because it's also important to know what uh, rootstock you have because further up down the line if someone wants to plant this they need to know how big the tree is going to be and whether it's an appropriate size tree. So label this, I'll probably label it again on the back just to make sure that doesn't rub off. Now the reason I'm putting this in a pot is we're gonna, this tree is going to live in a pot for at least two months and that's really just to give it a head start with good quality soil. It's going to keep the roots away from anything in the soil that might want to eat them, anything that might damage them. And it also means that for the first couple of months, we can place this tree on a window ledge, in a greenhouse, or maybe in a polytunnel, somewhere undercover where it's going to be a little warmer. And that's really going to help to speed up the uh, process of the callus formation here. And hopefully, if all goes well, after about five to six weeks, we should see some life in these buds, okay? So we're gonna see these buds swelling. Now, after six weeks, what we're gonna do is actually just cut the bottom here, cut the bottom of the tape, and instead of taking it off in one go, just first let it unravel, it'll spring off because it's been wrapped around tight for a while. It'll spring off, just leave it like that for a few days, and that will allow the air to slowly get up in there, and that will start to harden off the color. So it's a little bit like setting concrete you need a bit of air for it to to harden up and then you can take that off and you'll see hopefully a lovely uh, graft where the two have fused together as one and you'll start to get some life out of these buds here and for aftercare what you need to do then is just concentrate on two buds the uppermost and you want to let those grow all the rest of them you can just pinch off 
as they start to grow over your fingernail or secateurs, I just do it with my thumbnail. Same with rootstock, anything growing on the rootstock we don't want. Uh, and that will divert the energy into these two shoots. And then once you've got one that is your definite winner and you're sure uh, that that's gonna be a good one to keep, you can get rid of the other one. And then put a cane in. Ideally, you put the cane in quite soon before the roots start growing. And then you can secure this shoot onto the cane. And the reason we do two is just in case anything happens and one of them gets damaged, then at least you've got another one to choose from. Otherwise, you have to start all again because you've pinched the rest off. And uh, it's quite a satisfying moment when you first start seeing the uh, shoots growing because, of course, you know your graft is, is taken and you know that there's a transfer of nutrients and water between the two. And amazingly, you've turned two pieces of tree into one living tree. And I'll show you an example of a graft of a, uh, of a, a graft union that has taken nicely. So here's one I grafted earlier, uh, as in I did this actually two years ago. So this one really should be out of a pot by now, but sadly I've had nowhere, nowhere to pop him in at the moment. So for now, it's quite useful because you can see how that graft should look as the two are formed together. You can more or less see the Z shape there, where the graft was, and they fuse together as one. And then we've got an apple tree here. And actually, you could expect to see at least this much growth in the first year up to about here uh, from your graft. But when you eventually plant your tree out, of course, this needs to be out of the ground. The graft union should be out of the ground, at least two to three inches out of the ground there. 